Welcome to Globe! Check out our menu. Choose from a variety of fresh ingredients. Check out our salsa. Watch your burrito being made. Enjoy! Mo's Nose Catering, Burritos, Tacos, and more. A hearty hello and welcome to you live at Moe's Southwest Grill in Cameron Village. This is Over the Boards with Mike Gazzillo. Hi there, everybody. I'm Drew Blevins alongside of the man behind the mustache, head coach of the NC State hockey team, head coach Mike Gazzillo. Coach, thanks so much for being with us once again. Yeah, my pleasure. Well, NC State has hit the rockiest stretch of road, certainly in my four years, arguably in the program's history since our last show. And a lot of that had to do with the injury bug biting. But nonetheless, we will convey the story to you as it has been laid out so far this semester. As always, we have to thank our sponsors live on location here at the Cameron Village location of Moe Southwest Grill. For more information, you can call them at 919-999-3999. Coach, let's go ahead and get right into it. And we actually do not start in the great state of North Carolina. Picking up from our last show, the first games that were played were all the way back in Maryland against the Maryland Terrapins, who were ranked number three at the time. Of course, that ranking has since fluctuated. And then the Georgetown Hoyas, a pair of tough losses. But that Maryland game, there were a lot of positives to take out of that. A younger roster, Joey Hall plays one of his best games of the season. What were your overall thoughts on the way the pack took on the Terrapins? We had a really good game. Uh, I was impressed with a lot of the things the guys did. Uh, we went up pretty short-staffed, uh, which is a tough thing to do at any time, but especially when you go on the road and you're playing against a team like Maryland, it uh, comp uh, compounds it a little bit. Um, but I, I thought we played well. Um, we were down in the third period, and I thought the guys showed a lot of resolve. And uh, we wound up losing 4-3, but we were down 4-1 uh, going into the third. So uh, the guys really worked hard. You had even talked about Maryland dating back to their days when they did play in the ACCHL before moving to the MACH. But this was a good hockey team then, and the last ACCHL game that Maryland played was against your NC State Wolfpack and ended up an NC State victory for the ACCHL title, and that's why you have that banner hanging in Raleigh. Is there something added extra about that game playing a former ACCHL team? I mean, I was really the only guy, you know, with the team that remembers that. So for, for these guys, uh, they didn't know anything about that. Uh, and as far as I go, I, it doesn't really matter. None of that stuff really matters to me. Um, I, you know, it was, it was good to get back on the schedule with them. It's not like I hadn't tried in the past, just kind of couldn't work it out. Um, and I know that afterwards the uh, the coach uh, said, hopefully we're going to see you in Raleigh, and he said, yeah, you guys got a really good team. We'd love to come down. So uh, maybe we can kind of build that relationship with them again. That'd be nice. Certainly was a fun game took on the Terrapins. Luisa Menez and Sam Banishevitz combined for the scoring in that game. Again, the final score, as you alluded to, was 4-3. to three. The Terrapins take the win. You get a little bit of a rest period, then come right back the very next night against the Georgetown Hoyas in an interdivisional ACCHL tilt. Georgetown had not had the best of records going in. They had a weak ACCHL Stephen Russell tournament, and then they just started to pick up a couple more wins and a big home test having NC State come to them. You guys had the lead 2-1 in that hockey game before it was squandered down the stretch in the third period. A couple of penalties proved to be costly. But when you look at that game, it seemed like about midway through the second period, your team started to tire just a little bit because you were working on a short bench. But what was it like trying to get them to keep fighting through that Georgetown game despite being so short-staffed? It wasn't really much for me. I mean, the guys wanted to play. You know, they, they kept working. Um, you know, you, you play in the sixth period uh, in, in, in a weekend when you, you've got, you know, three lines going. And, uh, you know, we've got some forwards that are playing D. And, I mean, again, you're not really making excuses. It's just it is what it is. And, um, you know, yeah, like you said, we're up 2-1 and a couple of penalties. And some of the penalties were, were fatigue mistakes. And, um, you know, unfortunately that's going to happen, you know, when you're, uh, when you're down and you're, and you're, um, you're shorthanded. But uh, I think the guys handled themselves overall pretty well. Um, definitely, I'm definitely happy with the effort. 
Well, it was an 0-2 trip to the great state of Maryland, one that was palatable considering that there was an ACC stretch of games coming down the pipe. And then you play Wake Forest that next weekend. And the Demon Deacons were a team you had talked to us last time we met here that this was a game you had circled, that everybody was sort of overlooking the Demon Deacons. But that's a very good hockey team. What were the certain factors you knew were going to play a role going into that Wake Forest game? You know, I, I think you get a, a lot of times you get situations where guys look at teams that they've played in the past and they look at that as a determining factor in how the game is going to go. Uh, it's a huge mistake. You know, and it's not like it's nothing we've ever discussed. Um, Wake Forest, you know, beat us the last game of last year. So you know that they, you know, they wanted the, the game uh, from us this year. Um, they're, they're, they're off to a good start. And, and they know that, yeah, everybody knows, if they want to get to number one in the division, they got to go through us because we were the, guy, we were the team that had it. And uh, they came in, and uh, it was a close game. It was a 3-2 game. And um, we just... Uh, on the short end of that one, and now what are you going to do? It was a 3-2 game. NC State scored the first goal of that hockey game, but then Wake Forest roared back, especially through the second period. Scott McKean was the one who deposited the goal to make it 3-1 to one right over top of Joey Hall in that hockey game. And Wake Forest, they just never let off the gas pedal, it seemed. But what everybody's going to remember Wake Forest for is the third period injury to Sam Banashevitz, which effectively took him out for the rest of the semester. And here's a guy who was co-ACCHL leading scorer last year, one of those heart and soul guys of your hockey team that has a lot of character, brings everything he has to the rink daily, fun guy to watch play, and all of a sudden you take that presence and rip it right off the ice. And then down the stretch, you really saw the effect that that had, even within that hockey game. Luis Jimenez scores a huge goal for team morale about two minutes after Banashevitz leaves the ice, makes it 3-2, of course, the finishing effort to score that last, and tying goal wasn't there. But when Sam goes down, surely everybody in that building, yourself included, sort of went, uh-oh, this, this could be bad. Yeah, I mean, I've never really seen him uh, react like that. So once once I saw that and I saw that he wasn't getting up, uh, I knew I knew something was up. When I got out there, he, he obviously he was in a great deal of discomfort, and I just wanted to make sure that he can kind of move some things because he wasn't really answering the questions I was asking him, uh, and and that was fine. Um, but once I I noted he had some mobility and stuff like that, um, you know, he just turned to me and said, "I heard it pop." And I was like, okay. So, um, you know, we got him off, and luckily it was a home game. Uh, his folks were there. Um, you know, but, yeah, you, you were right what you said as far as, uh, you know, that, that kind of sometimes when you lose a key guy, it motivates the guys a little bit. And, um, you know, play for him was definitely what was being said. But, you know, um, the reality of it is Wake Forest never took their foot off the gas, and, and we did. And that's what cost us the game. The Demon Deacons take home the victory by a final count of 3-2, to two, and they have since continued their winning ways. The Demon Deacons are a very good team. NC State travels to Winston-Salem to play them in the second semester of the season. Banishevitz goes down. You already know you have no Will Bieberdorf. And then you have various and sundry injuries spread throughout. Jack McDonald spent time out. Danny Fredenberg was banged up. The list goes on and on and on. Tyler Alfonzetti as well. I mean... And then you go to Charlotte, a team that always plays NC State well, especially in the Queen City. And you've got to find a way to compete with a tough green and gold team down there without two-thirds of your top line as it would have stood healthy. Calvin Stone goes down there, plays a whale of a hockey game, just simply tremendous. But you find yourself in the third period, John Copelandberg going to the penalty box, down two to one. Danny Fredenberg, senior leader on the team goes and scores the shorthanded goal to tie it up two to two you take a point back with you from charlotte which is right now keeping you in that playoff race as the standings are right now but that is the biggest tie in nc state hockey history is what it feels like because that keeps the boat afloat and that's a decent charlotte team down there that you beat with or tied i should say with a bunch of freshmen is what it looked like i mean <clears throat> Through this whole ordeal of guys that are hurt and got, they're out and guys that are playing hurt um, and trying to play through things, um, 
most of the games we're in. And that does say a lot. So people look at the score, they would look at the win-loss, but I'm not really looking at it that way. I'm looking out at it at, you know, what's going into, what's causing us to lose these games. So we don't have a lot of depth. And, you know, realistically, that's, that's a problem. Um, but, you know, going out and, and the guys still, you know, trying to play and, and keeping us in games, you know, you have to say to yourself, if we had a full healthy squad, you know, where would we be? Um, but, you know, the, you don't want to really second guess everything. It's just, it is what it is. You play with what you got and um, do the best we can. Charlotte's always good. I'm, a, I'm assuming, you know, that when they get back to us uh, next semester that they're going to be a strong uh, comp uh, opponent. And uh, we, we've got a couple of big games. So actually, that, that whole second semester schedule is one game after another. That's one bigger than the next. So it's, it's, it's going to be a true test of the character of the guys, you know, that are going out and playing to see uh, how they can deal with the adversity of having such a poor season uh, first half. Well, now in the past four games that Charlotte has faced off with NC State, the 49ers are 0-3 and 1 against the Wolfpack, something that you have to feel nicely about. But then you get that Saturday off and transitioning to go play Virginia Tech at the gorgeous facility that is the Berglund Center. Virginia Tech's a team that really hasn't done as well as they would have liked so far. They came into that hockey game two games under 500, but... That first period after scoring the first goal, Eric Johnston first goal as a member of the NC State Wolfpack, things just trailed off downhill. Brendan Hoey gets a couple of goals. David Dashiel has a hat trick in that hockey game in an 8-2 final that certainly you put in the back of your mind and try not to bring up. But what was so critical about that hockey game that saw the wheels fall off the wagon? Fundamental mistakes um, had a lot to do. I mean, again, <clears throat> it's always going to be depth first, and then from there, all right, well, th there's not much I could do about that. Um, then you get into just a lot of the fundamental mistakes. Uh, positioning, not back-checking to the right you know, places, not covering your guy in the defensive zone, not shooting when we have opportunities to shoot and trying to, you know, stick handle through teams or trying to make passes that aren't there. You know, this is, you're not going to, and I tell them all the time, you're, we're not going to win games if we don't get shots on net. You know, it doesn't matter if they have cones in the net. It doesn't matter if they have a squirt goal in, in the net. I mean, if you played a team of mites and you didn't shoot the puck, you can't beat the mites, right? So, you know, um, things like that, I, that's what I don't really get. That's what I'm, I'm, I kind of struggle with a little bit is um, you, you would think guys would do everything they can to get as many pucks. Look at the guy like Sam, man. Sam only he wants to score goals, and he'll get pucks in the net all the time. That's why Sam scores a lot of goals. And... You know, there's another option that's there for you guys. If you want to score goals, get pucks to the net. Not everything has to be top shelf. And sometimes we've had pucks go in that, that you know, they were just thrown to the net. It happens. But, um, you know, fundamental things like that really bite us at times. Well, down the stretch, the final two games of the semester were a triangle rivalry night hockey game where you've got North Carolina and the Duke Blue Devils. And certainly you thought both of those teams came in three wins or south. Hopefully you were going to be able to scrape across a couple of victories, but ultimately that's not what happened. When you look at those last two games, how disappointing is that, that not only are you not able to get the wins, but now you have lost to Wake Forest, Carolina, and Duke, a phenomenon that has not happened in your tenure. How disappointed am I? <laughs> Very. Um, you know, the, the UNC game, we just, we just had a god-awful first period. I mean, it was, uh, it was terrible. If you took the first period out, we won the second two periods, you know, but um, a slow start. Just like College in New Jersey, when we played them, we came out with just a slow start. And, uh, you know, the other teams, if they're not starting slow, they're, they're right on top of us. And, you know, uh, it, it's tough to kind of claw your way back. You know, you don't want to get in a position where you're always doing that. Um, the Duke game, uh, you know, we went into that ahead. And we let them get three in the third. So we had a slow start that killed us with Carolina. And we had a terrible finish that killed us with Duke. But, you know, these are some of the growing pains that you deal with uh, when you have a, uh, a young team. And uh, you're mixing guys up on lines and stuff because there was a lot of, you know, jockeying around going on. And you got some 
forwards playing D, and I'm doing an admirable job. You know, I'm not calling him into question at all, but, you know, maybe one or two of those guys could, could help us up offensively if we had that opportunity, but um, it is what it is. So it's not, it's not so much the adversity of the first half, it's how we're going to handle it in the second half that I'm concerned about. Well, coming back on the other side of the intermission break, we will talk a little bit more about those rivalry night hockey games, the loss to North Carolina and Duke. We'll assess the injuries that happened throughout this semester, and then we'll project looking forward to that opening weekend tournament up in Lynchburg, Virginia. Stay right there. We'll be right back with Over the Boards with Mike Gazzillo after this. Check out our menu. Choose from a variety of fresh ingredients. Check out our salsa. Watch your burrito being made. Enjoy. Mo's Nose Catering, Burritos, Tacos, and more. Side of Mike Cazillo, the head coach of the NC State hockey team. We are live on location here at Moe's Southwest Grill in Cameron Village. Coach, let's keep right on truck in here though, and let's go ahead and finish our game summary by first pulling into question the North Carolina game. North Carolina has just been an abysmally bad hockey team rolling in to that contest against NC State. They, they had not done anything in the positive column, it seemed like, aside from a fortunate win against the Duke Blue Devils, and they managed to scrape across one more. But the Tar Heels came in, exploited a couple of weaknesses on the defensive side of the puck, and opened up for five goals in the first period that really just led them right on their way to a victory. They didn't have to score another goal in the game. They did add one more in the second, but the 5 nothing first period is what won it for them. And that's the first time they've beaten NC State and Raleigh in any kind of recent memory. But just a huge win for them. Did we really get to see youthfulness come out in that hockey game? Or was it just a slow start, a bad 20 minutes that was costly? What happened there in that first period that eventually led to the loss? Um, you know, guys should be up for a game like that. Uh, and we weren't. And... Anytime you go out and, and you're, you're not ready to go from the drop of the puck, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back and get you. Now, everybody that comes in, you know, if we've had a good record against Duke or UNC or any team, when they come in to play us, you got to know that they're throwing everything that they can at you because, uh, you know, they're the underdog, so to speak, so to speak. Um, so they've got nothing to lose because, you know, like I tell them, you know, we, we come in first place, everybody wants to knock you off. So how, how would you feel going in if they were that team? How, how bad would you want to beat them? And then just reverse it. So, you know, you got to be ready. And too many guys weren't ready to play. And, you know, again, you, you've got a team, a lot of guys that are first year and stuff. And... It is what it is, but you know, hopefully they learn from it. And honestly, we got a chance to see some guys play the first semester that might not have gotten as much ice time as they have. And um, you know, so if we have a situation going into the second semester where uh, you know we lose somebody with you know, hopefully not an illness, but you know, I mean, an injury, but maybe like somebody gets the flu or something, um, I kind of have an idea of you know what I can pick from. But uh, I think. Uh, yeah, I think a little bit of inexperience um, kind of hurt us. Well, the Wolfpack did swallow the loss by a final count of 6-2 to two to the North Carolina Tar Heels. First time North Carolina has beaten NC State and Raleigh in now seven seasons. And it's a big win for North Carolina because that was the first game they had played after the passing of their assistant coach, Dick Lefty Marr. And we'll get to that at the end of the show as well as talking about some of the inexperience. 
But to wrap things up for this semester, senior night for Danny Fredenberg. In his last game, you get to play the Duke Blue Devils. And I don't know if you caught the Saturday Night Live sketch with Tom Hanks in it. That, Why, was I on that? Uh, no, you were not. Oh, okay. But one of the sketches had a character named David Pumpkins. And the entirety of the sketch was based off repetition comedy where you just got that name, David Pumpkins, being said over and over again. The analogy I'll bring into that is in that Duke hockey game, the name you kept hearing over and over and over again was Travis Buck. And through 40 minutes of hockey, you really didn't hear a lot of that name, but the third period was punctuated, highlighted, and stamped with seal of approval by number 16, Travis Buck from the Duke Blue Devils. Scores a natural hat trick in the final 20 minutes to take hold the win for Duke 3 to 2. That's gotta be tough to swallow. Because Jeff Wing came in the second intermission, explained to us how critical it was to finish. And then you came in 20 minutes later and said just how disappointing it was not to be able to bring home a senior night win for Danny Fredenberg. But nonetheless, the result stands as it is. And instead of having a poor start, the finishing effort wasn't there. Yeah, I mean, you can't take for granted because you're up to nothing uh, against any team. And I've told them, you know, <clears throat> going back, we, we've played Duke clearly very one-sided games where we'll score maybe eight or nine goals and they'll get one, and they'll get that one in the last minute of the game. And so you don't ever let up on Duke. Um, we know 16's their best player. We had some penalty trouble in the beginning of the third, which, you know, I wasn't really happy about some of that stuff that went on. Um, but, you know, it's, um, I was, you know, I always say to the guys, usually in the, in the end of season tournament, play for your seniors, you're going to be there one day yourself. Play for your seniors. And I said that uh, in, in the locker room before the Duke game and between the periods. And I don't think they played as well as they should have. And I don't want to say they didn't play for him because the guys really respect Danny a lot. And he has definitely earned their respect and respect like throughout the league. But um, they, they they could have they could have performed a lot better, and uh, and they didn't. And I don't think it's conditioning. Uh, I'm pretty certain it's not conditioning. Uh, I'm just, you know, concerned of lack of focus on some of them uh, at, at certain times in the game. Well, now that we have sort of encapsulated the spirit of the semester, which hasn't necessarily been a good one, we can now step back, and I want to look at something that is the white elephant in the room, and that is the injury factor. NC State swallowed a lot of injuries. The good news is most of them don't seem to have any carryover effect into January, possibly a week or two. But when you look at the injuries in context to goal scoring, that is really one of the major diagnostics as to why this team is 5-7-1 and one at the end of one semester of hockey. Because down the stretch, NC State scored three goals against the Maryland Terrapins. But in the six games following, two goals in every game, the lowest goals for total in all the ACCHL over that stretch. And that's never something State has struggled with. But the obvious answer is yes, the injuries did have an effect on goal scoring. But can you talk a little bit about how much that affected the season as it stands now? Well, I mean, um, when you have situations where we're not scoring, um, the guys that go out, they have an opportunity when they get out there. Either, again, get pucks to the net, let one shot turn into two or three, um, tip-ins, deflections, rebounds, whatever, get guys in front of the net to, you know, try, try to get the dirty goals, um, and they just didn't want to do it. And they would come off and you'd turn around and say, why didn't you shoot? Or, yeah, I should have. Well, that's not the time to think about that, you know? Um, well, you're struggling to get points, and you got guys that are not playing as much as they normally do, uh, or normally would have. You would think that they would want to take every opportunity to get out there and get those pucks to the net and at least make a good showing of it. And that didn't happen. So I, I don't have the answer for you. Uh, lack of depth and lack, to some degree, of maturity 
um, it was the only thing I can relate it to because I can assure you, Jeff and I and, and even Alex, we talk about that every single game, every single game, you know, and uh, so it's, um, it, it's, it's frustrating, but, um, you know, that's something that they have to, individually the guys have to go out because I can't, you know, it's not an, a, you know, a table game where I can do this and make, you know, guys go to the net or shoot a puck. It's something they have to want to do. So until they come up with the realization that I want to be here and I want to get pucks to the net and I want to be a contributing factor, we're just going to be swimming in a sea of mediocrity. Well, the other question I have for you in sort of the same vein is really you've got your top line who is undoubtedly set, Luis Jimenez, Will Bieberdorf, Sam Banaszewicz, but you lost two-thirds of that line to injury. You put a lot on Luis Jimenez. And he got tested. And to his credit, he played a role of finisher, playmaker. He was the heart and soul of the offense there for a while. And he filled those shoes as best any man could when trying to make up for three and four guys lost. But when you have that top line fully intact come January, are you confident that this is going to be a team that is going to be able to score the puck at least in some form or fashion the way they used to in years prior? I mean, I would expect that that's going to happen. I, I would expect that, you know, we're going to get pucks to the net. You know, law of averages, if you get more pucks in the net, you got a better chance of getting, a, you know, getting a goal. Um, you know, I know Will's hungry for it. He's dying to get back, and I know Sam's dying to get back, and I know Sam is, you know, like I said, the guy just wants to score goals. Um, you know, we're losing Danny next semester. Uh, he's graduated, you know. Um, but getting Tyler back uh, with Ryan, and now we just have to find that missing piece of that puzzle. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm hoping to have at least two or three lines that are that are intent on going out and getting pucks in the net. Um, I have a few things in mind. A couple of deals, I'll swing with them. I don't know if they'll like the uh, end result, but um, you know, you have a choice. You could either make it happen, or you could, uh, or not. So, when given that choice, why would you not? Well, the final question I have for you is: You open up the semester in the Liberty Showcase Tournament Friday night. You've got the Louisville Cardinals, top ten ranked team. You've got the Virginia Tech Hokies bordering on the top twenty-five, and then you're going to have the Liberty Flames, who are top five. That is a tough way to come back into the semester. What are your expectations going into that tournament playing three very good hockey teams? Any win in that case would constitute as a resume builder. You know, um, the, the guys know what's at stake uh, second semester. Um, we've got a pretty good um, number of weeks off. What do we got, six, seven weeks off? Uh, they'd be foolish to not stay in shape. We've got four practices before that Liberty tournament, and I fully intend to make sure that they're in shape and they're ready to go. Um, it will be a good, it will be a good uh, test to, to see who's uh, ready to play. And I mean, there, there may be some situations where I'm not 100% sure on what I'm going to do with a couple of guys, and uh, so we may address a couple of guys, different parts of the games, and uh, different games, and try to formulate exactly what I want to do going into uh, our ACC games. Well, Coach, it has been an absolute blast to have you for what is now my seventh consecutive semester at the helm of this show. Only three more shows where it will be the two of us together, and we will see you on the other side, uh, I guess, come January or February. Yep, whenever. Just give me a call. I'll be happy to do it with you. It has been an excellent show. I'd like to give a special shout-out to all of our crew members on the control, Logan Sims, camera, Rachel Queen, and Madison Bell. Thanks to all of the crew who have joined us for the live hockey games as well, Nick Sinopoli, Brett Galt, and Andrew Schnitker. We would like to end by once again sending our condolences to the ACCHL hockey families of the North Carolina Tar Heels, the Duke Blue Devils, and the High Point Panthers with the loss of Lefty Marr and head coach John Voss of the High Point Panthers, both of whom passed away during this semester. We send our heartfelt thoughts, prayers, and condolences out to all of them. We hope you enjoyed this show. It has been a fun and enjoyable semester of hockey, and hopefully NC State will continue their winning ways come second semester. From all of us at PAC TV, we hope you have a very Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season to all of you. For the man behind the mustache, head coach Mike Gazillo, and for all of our friends at Mode Southwest Grill here at Cameron Village, I'm Drew Blevins. Thanks so much for joining us. This has been a production of PAC TV bringing you into the PAC. Have a wonderful holiday season, and we'll see you next semester.